Hey guys, Level Cap here, and this week in gaming we have a ton of Battlefield info, the Mass Effect remaster is getting mixed reviews, Warzone anti-cheat is getting a lot better, and much more. It's been a long week for Battlefield fans. There's been many supposed leaks, rumors, and speculation floating around about this year's entry in the franchise. EA have also started opening up a little bit about the game. And I thought, why not take a quick recap on all the things that we actually know about the next Battlefield game. First up is the name. EA and DICE have been mainly referring to the game as just Battlefield to avoid revealing the game's actual name. So we don't know if it's gonna be called Battlefield 6 or just Battlefield or something else. DICE have hinted at the game being set in the modern day a few times. Last year's EA Play Live presentation included a Frostbite Engine Tech preview showing the collapse of a modern building. Since then, DICE and EA have both referred to the game as a return to all-out warfare. We don't know specifically when or where the game is set, but a modern military era seems likely. Rumors about the game supporting more than 64 players in a match have also been buzzing. Again, DICE and EA have hinted that this might be the case but haven't made a firm statement one way or the other. In their most recent investor call, EA said the next-gen console hardware gives them the opportunity to do more with respect to the amount of players that we can have in the game. They said similar things about the game's destruction, physics, AI, and immersion, but they also said the game would be available on last-gen consoles too, so it's unclear if all versions of the game will offer cutting-edge graphics and scale. Either way, we are going to know in June. DICE will release a trailer for the game next month, it'll probably be a cinematic reveal like the initial trailer for Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5. And of course, a lot is riding on this trailer. As for the speculation surrounding the game, it mostly comes from a handful of sources. Alleged leaker Tom Henderson posted sketches of this trailer on his local media accounts. Following that, two supposed screenshots of the trailer began circulating. The community has heavily scrutinized these screenshots and many believe they're genuine. That said, they're also way below the standards DICE usually demonstrate in their marketing materials. At best, they look like they could be an early version of a trailer idea. Of course, they could be genuine and from a very early version of the trailer, but we're treating them as pure speculation until the trailer is officially released. There have also been reports of a video clip and full audio from the trailer floating around, but again, Again, these don't seem very official. As for the live service versus premium post-launch support debate, it sounds like EA are leaning toward the live service. They expect the next Battlefield game to be a long-term experience and will likely apply the lessons they've learned from Battlefront 2, Battlefield 5, and Apex Legends to this new game. Finally, the next Battlefield game will release in its usual holiday window, so between October and December. EA Play Live is happening in July after the initial reveal, expect gameplay and and more info then. In other Battlefield news, Battlefield 5 is having something of a comeback on the PlayStation thanks to it being one of this month's PlayStation Plus free titles. The game has seen a massive influx of new players and even Firestorm is playable on the PlayStation 4. That said, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Many players are reporting issues with the game not tracking or rewarding unlocks properly. We've reached out to DICE for a comment and we'll cover their response if they release one. For now, your best bet is to check the game's forms for troubleshooting tips or contact EA support. If you enjoy our gaming news coverage, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out and keeps you in the loop on everything going on in the gaming world. Be sure to hit the bell icon and enable notifications to catch breaking news as it happens. The launch of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition Trilogy Remaster has been a mixed bag for players. User reviews complain about various issues with mouse acceleration, ultra-wide support, the lack of an FOV slider, limited graphics options, performance, and more. Many of these complaints boil down to Mass Effect 1 being a very old game and the remaster not being a full-on remake. The original PC version of Mass Effect 1 also has issues with mouse acceleration, but that game has the benefit of modders spending years, tweaking the game to fix it. I think it's safe to say that if the developers don't fix these issues, modders eventually will. It's unfortunate that the developers didn't fix more problems with the remaster, but ultimately I think fans will be satisfied one way or another. The Mass Effect trilogy is still an incredible experience and the remaster helps it age more gracefully. It may be imperfect, but it's still a significant improvement regardless. 
Anti-cheat efforts in Warzone are slowly starting to look productive. This week, Raven announced they had crossed 500,000 total bans. That's an astronomical number and it goes up roughly 30,000 players every week. Warzone being one of the world's most popular free-to-play titles makes it a massive target for cheaters and cheat developers. That means you're going to see a lot of cheaters in-game, regardless of how good Warzone's anti-cheat system is. Cheat developers might be the scum of gaming, but they're not idiots. There are countless cheat makers out there testing and refining finding their hacks to avoid detection. Raven seems to be stepping up their anti-cheat efforts and even went so far as to ban a cheater live this week. They took out a cheater who was being spectated by Tim the Tatman on Twitch as thousands of viewers watched. And while it was clearly a great moment in the stream, it led to a big debate about preferential treatment. Cheaters seem to avoid being banned for weeks, if not months. The incident sets a precedent for Raven to take quicker action against obvious cheaters. In more positive Warzone news, the game's next update drops on May 20th and will add iconic 80s film character John Rambo as an operator. John McClane from Die Hard is also being added as an operator, but it's not clear if he'll be available on day one. Leaks of both characters in-game leave a bit to be desired, but it's still fun getting some classic 80s action stars in Warzone. Cold War Zombies is also getting a big expansion next week. It'll add the first main quest to the Zombies Outbreak mode. The update will also include a big rebalance of Cold War's weapons in zombie mode to improve their overall effectiveness. Season 4 will add a new round-based map to zombies. The Epic vs. Apple court battle has been a wellspring of insider info about the gaming industry. We've learned about how much Epic pays for free game giveaways, that Epic offered Sony $200 million for their games, and that Walmart is working on a game streaming service. Much of this info comes from documents that were accidentally made public that were supposed to remain sealed. Going forward, it's likely the only info we'll get about the industry's inner workings will come from what's said in the court by lawyers and witnesses. The implications of the trial are astronomical, at least for the business side of the gaming industry. Issues like how much developers make from the sales of their games, crossplay, and exclusivity are all at the heart of this case. Depending on who wins or how the case is settled, we could see long-time industry standard practices and trends changed forever. Multiplayer survival game Rust's underwater expansion might be getting a lot bigger than players expected. We've known about a submarine coming to the game at some point, but data mining has revealed the developers are probably building a underwater compound players can explore. The game's last major expansion built upon the subway network, adding several underground stations and a working train system. It sounds like the devs are really fleshing out the game in several new areas. Before we get to our final story, thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll be back with more daily gaming news coverage on Monday. Researchers at Cornell University published a groundbreaking project that took Grand Theft Auto V and used AI to make it photorealistic. They used countless hours of dash cam footage to train a modified AI model and applied it to footage taken in game. The result is an incredibly realistic looking video. Of course, the resolution and frame rate leave a lot to be desired, but it shows a ton of potential that would definitely be applied to games in the near future. The AI can't run in real time, but game developers could probably use it to enhance textures and assets. Game developers currently use technologies like photogrammetry to translate real-life objects into game assets. The result is always impressive, but throwing AI enhancements on top of that and adding ray tracing will lead to games that are visually indistinguishable from real life. The closest example I can think of in modern gaming is Metro Exodus's Enhanced Edition. That game is fully ray traced, but has several technical limitations in place to ensure that it runs well. Another generation of hardware or two and we might get to see a ray trace game game with zero compromises and totally realistic environments. This research project is also notable for being temporarily stable. Most AI-style transfer models apply weird artifacts and glitches to the output. This new model has basically none of those issues. It's a massive step forward for AI enhancement and showcases gaming's future. And that wraps it up for This Week in Gaming. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.